lowering our costs, allowing us to charge our patients less, which gives us a competitive advantage, but also allows me to actually be more profitable in my practice. We've been misled to believe that dentistry, more specifically the dental business, has to be complicated. Dentistry can be simple and dentistry should be simple. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the Dentistry Made Simple podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Tarun T-Bone Agarwal, and this week I want to talk to you about questions you should be asking yourself before you purchase any technology in your practice. But listen, if you aren't watching us on YouTube, please do that. We're trying to grow our YouTube presence. We're trying to do all of those things for 2024. So your assistance on subscribing to our 3D Dentist YouTube channel would be amazing. Before we get into there, let me talk to you a little little bit about what makes our podcast unique and some help that I need from you. We want to reach more people in 2024, and I need your help. So there's a couple of ways you can help us. One is you can get on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, and you can leave us an honest review. Hopefully it's five stars. And then the other thing you can do is you can share our podcast on social media. Uh, And then the other thing you can also do for us is understand what makes us different. And look, I've got almost 25 years of doing dentistry, owning a practice, providing amazing education. And what makes us different is that we actually do it. You know, 25 years of running a practice, 25 years of being a clinical dentist, 25 years of consistent growth, both as a clinician and as a business owner. And what I try to do each week is sit here and give you the facts, what's working in our practice, my viewpoint on these things, not talking about the 1980s or the 1990s or what once was or how it used to be from a bygone era. Dentistry has completely changed in 2024 from just even five, six, seven years ago. The challenges we're facing are similar, but some of the challenges are way deeper and a bigger issue for us. So help us out by getting our message to more and more people so we can make everybody love dentistry again. So now, what questions should you be asking about technology? You know, I've been a dentist. Actually, let's take it back. I've been into technology all my life. You know, even as a little kid, I, you know, I grew up in an era where PCs, computers, weren't very prevalent. And I remember having a computer, one of the first persons, you know, in my grade school to have a computer and how we always focused time on how these things, how technology would improve my education, improve my experience, improve my life. And I brought that same kind of love for technology into dentistry and have always been kind of focused on how technology can help my practice and help me as a clinician continue to grow. So over and over again, I get lots of questions of which printer should I buy? Should I not buy a printer? Should I buy XYZ milling unit? What should I do? And, and so, you know, it's become harder and harder to answer these questions without asking questions. And I don't like to give advice without understanding where somebody's at, what their purpose is, what they're focused on. And so that's what I want to do in this week's episode. I'm going to talk about four questions you should be asking before you buy any piece of technology. So let's get into it. The first question is, is this technology going to add a new service? Now, the first thing and the most important thing that sticks out to me on this from my experience has been CBCT. I bought CBCT not necessarily as a diagnostic tool, to find old root canals and things like that that were failing or to see better, I bought CBCT with a very specific purpose and I wanted to use it to make me more confident to add dental implants to my practice. Now, over time and having done that, it has become more and more important in our practice and has served many different uses. It is much more than an implant diagnostic machine. It is an overall diagnostic machine. But You know, when I'm choosing between multiple technologies or trying to prioritize which technology am I going to put into my practice this year, I will always ask the first question is going to be, is this technology going to add a new service to my practice? Now, what is the second question I want to ask? 
if it doesn't add a new service or if it does add a new service, the second question is, does this technology help me get treatment started faster and get finished faster? Now, the first thing to me that comes about from this is when I bought Sarek in 2003. So that technology, I was already providing Crown, so it didn't answer yes to number one. But it, what it did answer to is it allowed me to get Crown started faster because I could start immediately. And most importantly, it allowed me to get done faster because I could finish in a single visit. Not a single day, but a single visit. Like literally, patient walks in, sits down, we do the crown, we deliver the restoration, walks out, all done, no temporary, nothing. So for me, that's one of the things. <clears throat> Another piece of technology that many of us don't think about, and I want each of you to think about, is software like ExoCAD. ExoCAD is our preferred design software that we're using for advanced designs. Now, how does ExoCAD get me started and finished faster? Let's take smile design for an example. In the traditional model, if you wanted to do a smile design, your patient said yes, your patient would come in, you would take records, whether that's analog or digital, you'd send it to a lab, and then you know several days or several weeks later, they would send you back an analog or a digital wax up. <clears throat> And if anything wasn't exactly right with it, you'd send it back, communicate back, and then have them make adjustments. With software like ExoCAD, now I have that ability to get that uh, design done myself so I can get started faster and get that design uh, um, more fine-tuned for exactly what I want and what the patient wants. So those are a couple of examples that allow me to get treatment started faster. Actually, now that I think about it, 3D printing is another one of these for me. For me, 3D printing doesn't necessarily add a new service to my practice. But what it does do is it allows me to print in the office versus sending things to labs, allow me to get my surgical guides done immediately, you know, with cer certainly so much faster than sending it to a lab, allowing me to print uh, long-term temporaries uh, so I can have very strong temporaries for my full mouth rehab cases. So it allows me to get treatment started faster. It allows me to get treatment finished faster. So again, the first question, is it going to add a new service to my practice? The second question is, does it get treatment started or finished faster? The third thing is, does it increase case acceptance? In other words, does it make it easier for patients to say yes? So again, Let's go back to single visit CAD cam dentistry, Sarek in my case. It makes it easier for patients to say yes. Hey, Mrs. Jones, we can get this taken care of in one visit. You don't have to come back and forth. Why don't we go ahead and get started? You know, something like that because it makes it more convenient. Again, going back to, you know, a software like ExoCAD, it allows me to get my smile design uh, done faster. So it makes case acceptance better, but it also allows me to get the patient involved. I can literally sit there and do the smile design in front of the patient, make some changes, say you don't like this tooth shape, show them this tooth shape. You know, you can get too detailed sometimes, but it allows us to increase case acceptance. Another part of increasing case acceptance <clears throat> is also, does it allow me to lower my cost, but yet increase profitability? Now, when it comes to lowering costs, I am a comma-wise, decimal-foolish uh, co concept guy. I believe that your savings, that you can print a crown for $2 versus mill it for an $18 block, does nothing to the bottom line. But does it increase case acceptance to have a printer? And the answer is absolutely yes. Okay, because now, for example, I can lower my cost because now I don't have to pay $1,500 for XYZ product from a lab. I can get it done in the office and then I can do it for the same price and increase my profit. I can even lower my fee and increase my profit because I'm taking vertically integrating and taking control of the process. For me, that specifically relates to full arch implant cases. Now, instead of having to have the lab pre-make or make PMMA restorations for me, now we can design and print them and deliver them, uh, you know, customize them and deliver them the same day or the next morning uh, for our patients. So it's giving us complete control, lowering our costs, 
allowing us to charge our patients less, which gives us a competitive advantage, but also allows me to actually be more profitable in my practice. So again, we're talking about four questions that you should be asking yourself before purchasing any technology. Question number one was, is it going to add a new service to my practice? Question number two, does it get treatment started faster and or finished faster? Question number three, does it increase case acceptance? And then the fourth question, which is equally as important as all of them, is can it be delegated to a team member? Now, personally, as we get a little bit more mature in our practice, as we get a little bit more busier, as much as I hate that word, as we get life comes along and we have different priorities in life, this one becomes even more important. And then as we add more and more technologies, you know, the other day I was talking about how much technology we have in our practice and somebody looked at me and says, how do you know it all? I go, you know, one, I've had the benefit of having 20, 25 years of slowly accumulating all of this technology, whereas you're trying to do it all in a couple of three, four years. So that's an advantage I have. But two is I bring a technology in, I learn to use it, I learn to teach it to team members, and then I delegate it to a team member so they can continue using that technology, freeing me up to focus on a new piece of technology. So can it be delegated to a team member? Some of the technologies that we've added to our practice or adding currently to our practice that we're delegating to team members is zirconia firing. For example, we want to be able to mill bridges and do them at a super high level, not a fast, you know, 20-minute fire because I don't think they're aesthetically as pleasing as when you do a full zinter on some of these aesthetic zirconias. Uh, so we have a sintering oven. And then we have Mio stains. We have Ivocolor stains. We have all these things that at the end of the day, I simply, I, I don't have time to do them. Now, it is my job to make sure and my role as a leader to make sure I know, I also know how to use these things so I can teach my team, hold them accountable. And then if something happens, a team member leaves, that this thing suddenly doesn't fall away. So that is one of the risks and being too delegated. And that's not delegated, that's abdicating your success to someone else in your practice. So again, hopefully you found this episode helpful. Four questions that I always ask when recommending or adding technology to my practice. Is it going to add a new service? Is it going to help me get treatment started or finished faster? Does it increase case acceptance? And can it be delegated to a team member? Again, if you're looking to improve your practice, take back control of your practice, you need to join our 3D Business Mastermind. We're almost booking into 2025. That's right, folks. If you're ready to take control of your practice, we've got a few spots left for our July, or starting in July 2024, but otherwise we're starting to book into January 2025. We run the program twice a year. It is an amazing program. So don't wait. Get started now. You visit 3d-dentist.com. Uh, you can schedule a strategy call with Meredith or you can fill out the application and she'll get back in touch with you. And let's get on the road to taking control of your practice. Have a good day and I'll see you guys next week.